This is our podcast, where we belly flop into the bouncy house of mystery, surrounded by conspiracies and unexplained phenomena, with theories so bizarre, they may actually make you say, Are they thinking with their butt? Hey everybody, I'm Katie. And I'm Chris. And this is Stop, Stop thinking, thinking With, with Your, your butt. butt. Wah, 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 wah. Welcome back. First of all, tell me about the weirdest thing that you've done since the last time we recorded. I, just today, was outside doing yard work like the awesome wife that I am. <laughs> <laughs> you are so trained. Oh! What? No, keep going. You're doing great. <laughs> What else were you doing? Sleep with one eye open. <laughs> <laughs> After you had bestowed upon me the daily beating. <laughs> <laughs> and the list of chores. <laughs> <laughs> and the list of chores. And I had completed all my groveling. I was outside doing some yard work. And I was enthralled with the leaf blower. Mm. I had mowed the lawn. And I noticed that the driveway was pretty heavy with just miscellaneous natural debris just a lot of sticks twigs leaves mm -hmm. etc so i was like you know what i'll just one up myself and i'll leaf blow the driveway off make okay. it nice and clean as i'm leaf blowing the driveway i'm realizing all around me that the love bugs are in the air and it is definitely love bug season oh yeah, you always find them in pairs yes. of two have you ever seen them in pairs of like five thousand? <laughs> <sighs> And you blew these things? I leaf blew right into a pile of like a million mating love bugs. And they, it was like uh, someone had thrown a water balloon of love bugs at me. And it was just instant attack. <laughs> you got everywhere. In my hair, in my ear, in my shirt, down my back. Every <sighs> I'm never going outside again. Those things are the worst. They are everywhere. Everywhere. Well, I think they only last for like a couple of weeks or something. So apparently, there's a trick. I was trying to find how to keep them off your property. They don't like mint or citrus. Mm -hmm. So in some internet searching, I found that if you mix citrusy soap, citrusy detergent, mm -hmm. mouthwash, and water, okay. and just give a heavy spray around your property, it'll keep them away. I did this after my leaf blowing accident, and I think it attracted more. <laughs> Yeah, I think I, I came back from work today and saw that whole contraption in front of the yard. Yeah. It was fun. Okay, so now I know the yeah. next story behind that. Good. Yeah, now you know why that was there. Now I know. Yeah. So, I am going to talk about Elvis Presley. What? Because some people say that he died of a heart attack on August 16th, 1977. Some people? It's not a world-known truth? <sighs> What show are we on? I know. Of course not. <laughs> you got me. I know. So the King of Rock. Are you a big Elvis fan? You know what? My mom always continuously had 50s and 60s music on. So I know his music and I am I could probably sing most of it. But I, I don't know that I would hunt it out now. But I definitely am very familiar with it. And I enjoyed it. You were so familiar with it mm -hmm. that I remember not that long ago, I... Learned how to play one you of his songs did. on a piano and serenade you with my wonderful voice. You did. For our anniversary you or did. birthday or something like that. I don't know. Who cares? Okay, so. Oh. <laughs> At least it was special to one of us. America. So. <laughs> what if I told You're you. You're so romantic. I know. What if I told you mm -hmm. that. Elvis staged his own death to escape stardom, or he devoted himself to the defense of American freedom. By how? How so? He was in the army, wasn't he? He was in the army. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. We're not doing his whole life story here, but he is a big, quote unquote, American. Yeah, right? he's he, patriotic. Patriotic. Some think that he worked with the Federal Bureau of Investigations, or the FBI, to help take down organized crime and the FBI faked his death after those people he was targeting started to target him back and were how, threatening him. How was he targeting people? He was helping the FBI, um, kind of like an informant okay. or a witness. But then those people were like, hey, Elvis, stop ratting on me. 
Stop being such a hound dog. Oh my gosh, you are crying all the time. You are going to be on this all episode. I love it. So, best selling author, which side note is way better than amateur Amateur. (laughs) author, Gail Brewer Giorgio, wrote and investigated the death of Elvis a lot more than I did because she. I don't believe it. (laughs) It is true. It is true. (laughs) I don't believe. All right. All right. (laughs) And she even wrote a book about it called. Is Elvis alive? Question mark. In 1988, so about 12 years after the death, that's where we're going to start. So how does she even think about writing a book about Elvis? Well, after hearing the death of Elvis, she kind of got into this fascination about Elvis and that what if he faked his own death to get away from it all? And so as she was thinking about this, she's like, you know what? This would make a really good book. So mm. I am going to start making a fictitious character, a singer who went by Orion in 1978. And the book is strange enough called Orion. Mm. So the singer faked his own death to escape the pressure of being famous. And keep in mind at this point, she wasn't sure that she actually believed that Elvis was dead. She was kind of, she just thought unknown. it was a good idea. It was just, yeah, a, just a, a interesting idea, right? Just fantasy. Wouldn't that be interesting if so-and-so faked their death? Yeah. yeah. Okay. But as she started to write more about the story and started to investigate Elvis's death, she started to make connections that caused her to doubt whether or not Elvis, his own death potentially could have been faked. So in her research for this fictitious book, Mm -hmm. she was doing real research on Elvis's death Mm -hmm. and was like, wait a minute. There's a lot of questions about this. So when Orion was to be published in 1983, and this is kind of what kind of fully sparked her, she started to get multiple calls from her friends that her book could not be found in stores anywhere. The big thing is it was supposed to release on a certain date. Mm -hmm. So she told all of her family and friends and they went to the bookstores and they were like, Hey, this isn't here. And she said that she was actually paid 60,000 upfront to write the book. But which is common. Uh Yeah. And that's actually a lot for, for that. Yeah. For that time, actually, that is a lot. But when she called the distributor because her publisher wasn't returning her calls, they stated that they were told to pull the book (gasps) from production. Later, she received a letter from the literary agent. And for those of you who don't know what that agent is, it represents the writer and their work to publishers. Yes. And stated that the book was hung out to dry and publishers were afraid of legal problems and backlash from her book and wrote the book off. That does happen though, but... Okay. And at the same time, another author, this person is also like an investigator, was writing a similar themed book called The Presley Arrangement. And his book was also shut down at this time. Mm. They both claimed that people wanted their facts and their story to be silenced. <gasps> <gasps> did she get to the truth in her own story? Or did she know more to Elvis's death that caused the publisher to kind of move away. And so she started to conduct her own independent investigation into the matter. And then she moved from fiction to fact. Oh. <laughs> so nonfiction. And she's just an investigator at this point. But oh, yeah, oh, nonfiction. Oh, 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 she's a sleuth she's now. A sleuth. Ooh. So some of her ideas may be like home runs. Other may be strikeout. Let's find out what did Gail write about when she looked at her story Is Elvis Alive? That is a lot of the material that we are going to cover. And we'll answer some uh, questions. So side note, during my research, you'll see that Gail and others make claims or they're kind of like demanding answers that have gone unanswered for 40 plus years. What? Like some of them be like, no one's ever gotten back to me about blank. They never gave me a good answer for blank. Well, on this episode today, I... I'm going to tell you that I have some of those answers <gasps> or more specifically, I interviewed someone. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> with those answers, <laughs> a retired drug enforcement administration, special agent named Gregory D Lee, who has over 40 years of law enforcement experience has been invited as guest on CNN, Fox news, and has authored multiple books, including conspiracy investigations. How do you know this guy? Ah, Connections. (laughs) I sought him out. And he took your call. He did. Not only did he take his call, 
I have to pay him monthly rent. (laughs) Did you tell him that we will be excited to have him come visit his grandchildren next week? Yes, this person is also known as As Dad. Dad. (laughs) Hey, details, details. No, but he also, he literally wrote the book on conspiracy investigations. Ah, he did. And he does college textbooks for criminal justice. He literally did write a textbook on conspiracy investigations. He writes college textbooks. It's on our bookshelf right now. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yep. So, and he has another book called Practical Investigation Techniques. Mm. So, Again, sounds practical. He is a genuine investigator. And it's awesome because he is part of the Drug Enforcement Administration, which, as we'll go through this, Elvis had a huge fascination with drugs. Well, both (laughs) drugs and drug abuse. Yeah. And And sampling those drug abuse. He had a interest in drug enforcement. And he's also been expert witness in multiple trials, which will be important later when we talk about other expert witnesses that get brought up. Okay. So let's start with the beginning evidence. Like why would people even question the death of Elvis? I'm from, I guess a little bit of a different generation. So I, I didn't know much about the Elvis death and everything around it and all the fan base that were like, he's still alive because of blank. So super excited to look at all this. The first question that Gail posed, she had no answer for. I'm going to answer right now up front in in, (gasps) in this episode. The first thing that Gail saw as suspicious was that the Memphis police officially closed the case before it was medically or scientifically possible to determine the cause of death. They determined it was an irregular heartbeat, which is impossible to confirm. So you can't claim someone had a regular heartbeat if you didn't have that documentation prior to. And he had no prior medical history of irregular heartbeat. Apparently not in her book, but because (laughs) I will claim right now that I'm a better investigator. Yeah, you are. Look at you go. (laughs) During the trial that comes up later, Elvis was hospitalized Mm -hmm. and diagnosed with an irregular heartbeat. Mm -hmm. Confirmed. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. She stated that no one could answer her questions. Here we go. When she said that, why would they close the case before all this stuff? Well, if a death was presumed not to be foul play, a case may be closed even before the toxicology or sciencey things were specifically determined the cause of death. Correct. Because guess what? As the expert witness that we have, that we've interviewed, stated it's not a big deal. It's it's super easy to close it. And no if, signs of foul play, previous medical conditions. Yeah, they would just close the case. It's not an issue. And if later on they determine that there was potentially foul play, it takes no effort to open it again. Mm-hmm. So just because it's closed doesn't mean like it goes into the abyss and you can never it open it It doesn't get again. archived in a warehouse that's three miles deep. So going back, it was not a big deal. So I don't know why she unable to find the answers, but- there's first, first question, question answered. Answer. There you go. The second one is that she claims that the stomach content, and again, this is not going to be like some debunking episode, but these are just claims that she didn't know. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, huh, I wonder if I could figure that out. And lo and behold. And lo and behold, I just have to, because she just needed a law enforcement perspective. Right. Because everyone she was interviewing was like, the Elvis Presley fan club. Oh. <laughs> and I'm like, hmm. <laughs> Let's get a little bit better than that. The people who wanted him to be alive still. Yes. Yeah. So she claims also that the stomach contents were destroyed prior to the autopsy. She had a few rapid fire claims. That's all she said. She just said the stomach contents were destroyed. So what's our expert's opinion? No, that is impossible (laughs) is what he said. Because in order to destroy the contents prior to an actual autopsy is what she claimed. You can't do that. This expert has been in over 20 plus autopsies. You can't just remove the contents of a stomach prior to an autopsy. Correct. Without it being overtly obvious that someone like hacked into this body and removed the stomach contents. Can't make a dead person vomit. So it's not like they can expel the contents of their stomach prior. Yes, I asked him multiple ways of how it could have been done, and he's like, "No, it would, it would have came up in the autopsy that there was foul play at the removal." So he just outright stated that. Yeah, and I know impossible that to destroy prior when to people an outset. Pass, they void their bowels, but yeah. I guess if you have things in your stomach, I guess it wouldn't move. The expert okay. stated because he's done twenty plus that you can determine what someone ate yesterday. 
Yeah. By looking through the stomach contents. Through the stomach contents. You cannot just say that it was destroyed prior to. So he doesn't make sense. Doesn't believe it. Doesn't just doesn't conceptually make sense to him. So let's look at the next question. Why was the Shelby County District Attorney Office never officially notified to determine if there was any violation of crime? The expert states that the DA's office, which is the district attorney, wouldn't even be involved in Elvis's death because it's a police matter, not a DA matter. Uh, do you know the difference, like what they do or anything like that? DA has to be federal, doesn't it? So first of all, if someone dies or presumed natural causes, you don't get the DA because the DA specifically deals with prosecution of criminals and suspects. Okay. So if the police assume Oh, criminals and suspects. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if the police assumed murder, the DA still wouldn't get involved until, until there a was suspect a suspect <laughs> is ID so that they can prosecute and go from there. So when she's asking why were why was the DA's office never officially notified? Because there was they no, had no suspect need to be notified. Like 100%. And so this is where I, when I'm looking at these questions and she had she doesn't know why she's asking the question. To well, begin she with. actually had another investigator in the book who had the other book that was like silenced, mm. right? And he was an 18 year. Oh, the Presley mm -hmm. Persuasion, or what was it? Something like that. He had 18 years of LAPD like investigator skills. Mm -hmm. and how would he not be able to answer that? It was just kind of odd that hmm. it wasn't answered. So, but that's the difference, and that's why the DA would not have been involved. Yeah. So so far, based if it off the wasn't expert, if it wasn't such a prestigious death, probably like in the news and things like that, they probably wouldn't have even known. If it was just average Joe died, they would have never known. The DA office would have never but known. Even if they it, have no need to know. But to your point, it wasn't in their jurisdiction. Yeah. No reason to get involved. So I'm like, oh, expert, you are two two and zero oh mm -hmm. right now. The third question that she thought was kind of suspicious during the immediate death is that the photos of the death scene disappeared they can't be found anywhere do you think that's suspicious i don't think it's suspicious i think it's clumsy <laughs> <laughs> so what our experts say well mm -hmm. the experts stated first of all you know how like the cia is releasing these freedom for information act and yeah it's here's 50 years done. afterwards you're allowed to see whatever has been do you think the police release uh photos from crime scenes actually if mm. let me think about this i do i know the answer i do too I think they do. Nope. All death scenes, photos, and evidence will never be released for public okay. because it's not That's good, it's not available for public consumption. That's so good. there's no – you can't request it or after 50 years it gets released because it's 100% not for public consumption. Okay. I thought – I was going to say that maybe only cold cases don't get released because mm -hmm. it's still – they're still being worked on. Yeah, but there's yeah, a lot that of makes different sense. things behind it, but it's just not public I'm consumption, so it just will okay. never get released. So photos would be stored in records, then digitized nowadays, right? Mm -hmm. And if you had an agency that worked, let's say Memphis is where uh, he he died. So if you worked outside Memphis, they could request with a valid reason the department to give access to their records, which at this point is a file box. Yeah, in this age, yes, it would be a file box. Or if you were in the office then you can access it fully. Right. But it's not unusual for files or evidence to, as you said, get lost. There are clerical errors that occur all the time, all the time, because I get it that everyone wants to believe that every single person from the clerk on down, is Jason Bourne. Yeah. They're just not. <laughs> they're, they're, no. So, <laughs> you know what? In like 50 years from now, somebody's going to open a file case on like um, some like peanut thief. <laughs> And find the pictures of Elvis mixed in the file. Oh, probably, yeah. You know, it's going to come like, out. Like, oh shit. <laughs> so the other piece were, well, maybe it was taken. Well, if someone did take it, the photo would only have a small amount of people who had access to that information. Mm -hmm. And by this time, it would have popped up in someone's book. Someone would have an ancestor. Someone would have, would have found tried it, to, a friend, a family member, or they would try to make, make profit money of it. Off of it you yeah. Think so? The expert states that. Even though it's unfortunate that it got lost, A, we would never have seen the pictures anyways because it's not for public consumption. And there are clerical errors. It happens. Mm -hmm. So it would not be unusual. And if someone was manipulating it, 
again, they can find them pretty quick. Yeah. And I would think that the Elvis file would be handled a lot. A lot of people would want to put their hands and eyes on it. So that would just mean more hands. More hands, more, more chances, chances of someone of, misplacing mm-hmm. it. So the last one that uh, she mentioned uh, during the initial was the toxicology report disappeared from the official files, like the autopsy files report. But if it wasn't considered, did they even do toxicology? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. They, they, well, we'll talk about what the expert states, but that is common that the toxicology report would be attached to the autopsy. Yeah. I was just thinking if they ruled it a natural death, then why do a toxicology report? Well, just to... It, Rule out it could anything. be a self-inflicted, right? But it could be suicide. It could be other things, right? Overdose. But the LA investigator stated that, I say the LA investigator, it's the partner of Gail, oh. stated that most autopsy reports are about 40, 50 pages long mm-hmm. and very detailed, like yeah. the the color of the lungs were yeah. blank, right? You've, the, you've the heard. The weight. Yeah. How much fluid is extracted. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's semen everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> you know how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> that would be in like your general housekeeping report. <laughs> yeah. So all those things. Oh, were, good God, man. <laughs> glad we're awake here. <laughs> so because of that, Elvis autopsy was actually only two pages long. Whoa. Not 40 to 50. So they're like, what the, what the hell? What's going on? Clearly. That's weird. Yeah, that's weird. So let's see what the expert has to say. The experts stated that, you know what, two pages for a full report is actually too short. However, for someone that is non-suspected foul play, right? the the symptoms are, is, are obvious to an extent. A three to four page is probable. Three or four pages is actually probably what this type of autopsy would warrant. However, It could go up to the 40, like the other investigator was stating, depending on the circumstances and how much foul play was suspected. suspected. So they may be referring to a two page summary where you have the picture where it has like the front of the body and then has the back of the body. Yeah. yeah. That's just like the cover. Ah, that's like the cover. (laughs) Yeah. So he's like, because he's like two pages, that's literally the cover page or the summary page. The doctor still has to input their narration. Yeah. So even though they speak it or whichever, they have to annotate that. Mm -hmm. So that's why he's like two pages. That's way too, not way too short, but it's just two pages too short. Yeah. If there was a lack of foul play, um, it shouldn't ever exceed two pages, but three to four. Yeah. That's be okay. okay. Yes. The toxicology report is attached. And I thought this was actually interesting. He says that if the conclusion was no foul play, and if there was a toxicology report, even if it said, yeah, this guy is all wasted or had a bunch of drugs mm-hmm. in him, sometimes, um, this is the behind the scenes sometimes of, of law enforcement, out of respect for the family members and to reduce additional trauma, those reports will be may, withheld. Yeah, they may be withheld or not released or just not included. It's not uncommon for someone, again, going back, it's all about there is no suspected foul play. Right. And this is actually very similar, if you're talking about like the reducing trauma, to porn in the military. Silence. (laughs) So if a soldier is killed in combat, the military will actually sweep through their electronics of the deceased and delete porn to not add further trauma to family members when they receive those electronics back. It's like when people are like, if I don't come back, clear my history. Clear my history. (laughs) Exactly. Because you don't need to put a spouse, a family member or anything through that. And my, my question is, I know when I was in the military, cause I had to um, get trained on how to inventory uh, how to dead find soldiers. Oh my God. <laughs> yes. I was very thorough with that, <laughs> but in the mid two thousands, it was very common and known that they would actually do that. So I'm only, I actually didn't know that. Yeah. So I'm only, I'm, I'm curious on how long did it take them to figure out that, yeah, they probably should be doing that. He, oh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> How many complaints do they have to get to be like, mm, we are going to change our standard? Yeah. So, we. Yeah. So I thought that was kind of, but it makes sense from a law enforcement perspective too, where do you really need to add that additional trauma? Yeah, probably not. All right. So let's look at other concerns that questions the death. During the funeral, people stated that the dead body wasn't Elvis. What? Witness statements say that. That there was a second, well, first of all, when you hear witness statements, I don't know how much you buy in (laughs) on secondhand information. Yeah. So, but witnesses 
stated that the nose structure wasn't the same as Elvis. His first cousin even, Gene Smith, stated that he didn't believe that the body was Elvis because the hairline was different. He thought it was a hairpiece. Hmm. I feel like though for morticians when they beautify you before you're dead, I can see them putting a hairpiece. If, if his they felt current it was hair necessary, yeah, yeah, if his current hair state was rugged, yeah. why wouldn't you put him in the iconic Exactly. And then you always want to correct any imperfections and yeah. make them look their best and bring color to their face. Or mm -hmm. Well, how do you explain that the body was sweating, babe? It was probably leaking, not sweating. <laughs> so there's two theories behind that. <laughs> and I'm, I wish I was kidding, but I'm not. <laughs> the body sweats or what you say? It's again? leaking. Ugh. What's it leaking? <laughs> Fat. Oh my gosh. That doesn't sound. There's a condition. I can't remember what it's called, but it's like when a body is decomposing, the fat will rise to the surface and make a body look waxy. Uh, you've been watching way too much murder. Yeah, I love it. See, I know that. <laughs> you could, good job. So if I had to guess, he's in the beginning stages of decay. Also, if I had to guess, he didn't have a service probably right away. Yeah, it probably took a while. To get it probably took a there. while to get it prepped. And if I had to guess, in the 70s, their preservation process probably wasn't as good as it is now. If I had to guess, I would say they swapped out the body with a wax, <laughs> with a wax <laughs> with figure. With a wax figure? Because the pres perspiration. At Madame Tussauds, is that the real Elvis's body? <laughs> yes. The wax is in the coffin and the real is in the museum? They thought that the, because there was wax, it was perspiring because of the heat. The heat. Because of the solar. Others think that well and he, this person even admitted well it could have been the wax for the hairpiece like yeah. how they glew it down yeah. was you know because beating of all that was beating mm -hmm. right so it kind of same looked like, like it well, sweating but it wasn't same with like i wonder how like the makeup on the skin if it's exposed to heat if it would start to clump you know what i don't know there's no like internal mm. heat but and the ex cold. external heat i wonder if that would impact it at all yeah, I don't know if it would make a sweat bead, though. I don't think so either. Hmm. But I'm trying to think through all. I, I actually, I think, it, it, I think there was a hairpiece, and I think it just was the wax or the glue for the hairpiece. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't think it was the wax figure type of piece. Have you, have you ever been to a viewing? Yes. Did you think that the person you were viewing looked like themselves? I didn't really know this person that oh. well. It was like a distant, distant relative, mm -hmm. and I was just happened to be in the same location yeah i've been to three viewings Ooh, okay Tell and me about i it. didn't think any of those viewings looked like the person every time i've gone i'm like this is a really weird tradition i wish we would stop and that could be <laughs> exactly it because you're so used to having especially someone who's that famous you're so used to seeing, seeing him in, in a, a certain, certain manner mm -hmm. yeah so the last thing that gene stated was that the hands were not as calloused in the areas as years and years of performance right so going back i don't know if this is something they're where the mortician like maybe manicures maybe yeah maybe because i could just they would file <laughs> off the calluses maybe i yeah. could i just see someone playing like the silence of the lambs yeah. where they are just like manicuring and they're <sighs> in like stockings and painting oh, the nails and just getting all crazy with it and be like oh fuck me <laughs> You know, that's look in the you, mirror. That's what you think about. <laughs> that's what I think about. <laughs> it puts the lotion on the skin. When you think about a mortician putting makeup on a dead body, you think of "I'll fuck me." <laughs> that was part of the. <laughs> that was the quote from "The Silence of the Lambs." I, I, Do you remember that scene? I, I yes, but I was <laughs> speechless. <laughs> Well, you know, my ego gets in there all the time. So, <laughs> <laughs> moving on, moving on. Don't get traumatized. Okay. There was even a picture of Elvis that was taken at the funeral mm -hmm. by another cousin named Billy Mann. And some say that he didn't think Elvis looked right. And so he took that picture as proof. proof. What's your thought on that? It's still the same that the mortician was just trying as much justice to the body mm -hmm. as possible. And maybe he looked younger. Maybe yeah. he looked a little different because they were trying to give him a certain appearance. Yeah. And I also think that I know 
people say that, oh, Billy took it because he didn't think Elvis looked right. Well, I think Billy took it because he was paid $18,000 for it later on. So I think the ultimate reason was greed. <laughs> yeah, that actually sounds... That's a lot of money back in the day. That's a lot of money. For taking a picture. I would take a picture if I had the chance. You know how the paparazzi now is like, I'll give you $16 million for pictures of that celebrity's baby. $16 million? Yes. I would... I'm just I would okay. run out there and take it. We should be why are we doing this? I, <laughs> <laughs> I have any camera. I can just <laughs> make up a camera. <laughs> uh, apparently it's illegal. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun though. Yeah. Oops. No, no, it would not be fun because they've been known to ruin lives. Yeah. So that's another thing that happened during the funeral. So there's the funeral conspiracy where they... I can't wait to have our own paparazzi, by the way. <laughs> Stop it. I, we got to close our... <laughs> close our curtains. Our, our curtains so that no one can look in here. Mary Columbus, who is the co-founder of the oldest Elvis fan club. Mary Columbus. That's kind of a cool name. Maria. Maria. What did I say? <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. I can't, I can't wait to play that back. It's like, Maria. So, and you're like, Maria. <laughs> selective hearing... <laughs> Because I while you're talking, I was I was doing the first thing of active, <laughs> the wrong thing of active listening, I which can't is can't wait to play this back. <laughs> I was already thinking that I was going to be wrong. No, because you hate me. <laughs> no, I was thinking that Gail, her partners are the Elvis fan club, <laughs> and so I was just thinking of the Elvis fan club. I thought it was kind of funny, but go ahead. Okay, that's you're saying I wasn't. <laughs> Oh, I said they were. <laughs> nope. <laughs> so Maria saw an inventory list of the estate of Elvis, and it was like eighty-four pages of wow. different things. So it was, it was almost like you know we've moved. Oh yeah, and the times, movers and will do, do an inventory. Uh, inventory. Yeah. And she stated that it was missing key items. He was missing a lot of his jewelry, and he was a big jewelry guy. A huge. He had a couple cars missing. He had a private plane that missing. was missing. Or not listed in the inventory. Not declared. Yeah. And there is also no picture of his mother was recorded or a picture of his family. Is that suspicious to you? Oh, wait, hold on. The thing's not declared. A plane, a couple cars. Jewelry. Or there is no specific records of a picture of his family or his mother. These are potentially a list of things that you would take with you to start a new life. Mm-hmm. That's why they were thinking, he's out. He took all that Ooh. stuff and left. I would be more skeptical. Was it like his favorite car is missing? Oh, you know what? I don't know. They need to his talk to his favorite pieces of jewelry are missing. You know? I almost feel like, so when inventories are done for people who don't know, it's, they do an inventory of whatever's currently on the property. Mm -hmm. So when you have multiple vehicles, and he always had an entourage that was with him. Yeah. Who knows what vehicles they were taking? So I don't fully think that necessarily was suspicious, but I, the one thing I will say that I do not buy mm -hmm. is the picture of the mother. I'm not sure that they would go into that much detail with the picture and inventorying. Quick army story. So I was deployed to Afghanistan, right? We had soldiers that were killed in our unit. And I didn't realize it at the time when I joined the army, but when soldiers are killed, an officer like myself, typically a lieutenant will actually have to go and gather and inventory all the dead soldiers gear, which I had to do three times. And side note, that's probably one of the worst experiences I ever had to do while I was clearing. Yeah, that is really, really sad. Yeah. While I was inventory someone's room, if I saw a, a framed picture of a soldier and his girlfriend, mm -hmm. I would label it as one times frame with picture. Yeah. I wouldn't specify. Oh, you wouldn't mother, say oh. with girlfriend. With self, what, right. right? It's just why there's no need to go to that level of detail. Right. And I'm thinking of also when we've moved, we moved like what, four plus times. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at, I'm thinking about all the description that they wrote. They didn't go to that level of detail. One box kitchen. Yeah. So it's no, not it like, was like box 54 kitchen. Yeah. Box so, 56 bedroom. A hundred percent. So would you be upset? We're like, oh, we're big coffee drinkers. Where's the coffee maker? In the inventory list. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's missing. Well, no, it's just. It's probably in a box labeled kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. So th so I, I'm not, I don't know if I'm a big fan of, of that piece, but it does, especially with some of the jewelry but and so when on. when there's 
if we're looking at one of our inventory lists from when we moved and there's no we're, car we're like oh, where's the car <laughs> where's the private plane so this is one of those things. where's my millions of dollars worth of jewelry yes but we the only people who could really answer that would be elf's closest family. family and i don't think she really in the book she doesn't really connect with them excessive mm-hmm. so it's all theory and if it's still if it's leased it's not your property technically oh so maybe it was repoed or returned potential or if it was a gift to his wife it's in or in his wife's name or family member's name it's not going to be on there uh, there's a lot of things when there's you have when you have an entourage I, yeah car stuff like that it's very hard to pin down yeah so the other thing that uh, maria noted as uh, that elvis's name and i did not know this did you know that Elvis's full name was Elvis Aaron Presley, and he officially changed his name. What did he officially change it to? Well, he changed his name to Elvis Aaron Presley. From what, though? Elvis Aaron Presley <laughs> to Elvis Aaron Presley, but with <laughs> one differently? with one A. <gasps> a. A. Ron. Not, not A. Oh, a. Ron. Oh, not A. A. Ron? Not like my boy Aaron Rogers. Not, not like A. A. Ron? <laughs> yep, so he changed it from two A's to one A. Don't when? ask me why. Uh, at some point in his career. So he spelled Aaron A R O N? That's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Almost as dumb as A A R O N. A A R O N. I'm going to call him A A Ron. A A Ron. Elvis A A Ron Presley. They thought it was. So he changed it from Elvis A A Ron Presley to Elvis Aaron Presley. Yes. They thought it was odd that his gravestone actually used the A A Ron. And that it could have been code that his body isn't actually there. It's not there. really there. It's, you know, he's letting his fan base know that <laughs> this isn't me because that's not my full name. And another oddity is that at the Graceland graveyard where he's buried, right? he was not buried next to his mother like he wanted to. Because if you Why go to the, not? if you go to his grave right now, he is in between his grandmother and Vernon. Who's his father. Her? Oh. So they're like, that was his dying wish. I thought this whole graveyard name placement thing was a little bit off because they're talking about it like right now. If you go there right now, he's not between his mother. But when he died, his dad became the decision making guy. Oh, was his dad still alive? Hmm. Now you're thinking what I'm thinking. His dad was alive at the time of his death. And his dad took over the estate the estate, and what to do with his body. So to me, if I was a dad, I can see him wanting to put Elvis's birth name on the stone. Yeah. And not whatever my kid yeah. wanted. You know, yeah. I changed his name too because this is what, that was his, that was his how, birth this name. This is your given name. And the mother aspect is actually not quite accurate. And when I say not quite accurate, it's horribly inaccurate. Inaccurate. <laughs> because Elvis was actually buried twice. What? Once in Forest Hill Cemetery, next to his mother, just like he wanted. Oh, and then he was moved to Graceland? But, yep, after a grave robber <gasps> attempted to steal his body, his dad, who was still alive, moved him and his mother to the Graceland estate, where he was buried again next to his mother, between his mother and his grandmother. Oh. Just like he wanted. But unfortunately, two years later... His dad died and put himself between Elvis and the mom. Oh. Because he wanted to be ne- buried next, next to, to his, his wife, wife. Which okay, I get. Okay. Right. So, yeah, I mean, he's not currently buried next to his mom, but I think they met the intent. His they, dad did a pretty good job. They did. A, oh, I can't grave robbers. My gosh. Yeah. So, tried to steal his body. Mm hmm. Cremation's the way to go. Yeah. <laughs> No, so uh, so I don't buy the whole fan piece. I want you to put my ashes into capsules and swallow them. Uh, that's what I told you, and you got what? all freaked out about it. <laughs> I'm going to take the whole capsule. Like, it's like a 36, 65, 365 days to get it all done. Yeah. And then I'm going to like crush it into a stone. I'm going to make it weird. Earpiece. In the earring. Yeah. Mm. It'll be fun. <laughs> 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 so I, I'm not a big fan of the fan clubs when they're doing their piece. All these things led people to believe that Elvis potentially faked his death because of the police report stuff, the grave stuff, the funeral. And so there's two main theories of 
why would he fake his own death if that's what he actually did? So the first theory is that he wanted to get away from all the stardom because it was literally killing his, him. Yes, it was literally killing him. Yeah, modern day Elvis Presley with what we're about to talk about in terms of drugs and ups and downs is Michael Jackson died because of all that. I was going to say, I don't think he's dead either. <laughs> that one's not as prevalent as this. Haven't you seen the video of Michael Jackson getting out of the back of the coroner's van and walking into the building? Moonwalking? No, just normal, <laughs> lame-ass walking. Then I don't think it's him. If he was moonwalking in celebration, I'd be like, he lives. <laughs> so, mm. you're going to be all negative. No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but Elvis was becoming morbidly obese. He yeah. was having, um, he was feasting on a diet of his favorite sandwiches. First of all, do you know what sandwich he craved? Peanut I'll butter and banana. Hold up. How do you know this? That's his favorite sandwich. Wow. I, you're missing one ingredient though. Was There's three peanut, ingredients. Peanut butter, uh, honey. So banana, good. Peanut it's healthy. Butter. Peanut butter, somewhat healthy. Now let's put something that. <laughs> Mayonnaise. Bacon. Bacon. We love it, but it's not good for you. So I want to go would, try it right now. <laughs> no, that banana, right. banana, peanut butter, and bacon. I never yeah. tried that. We never threw the bacon I've on. I've tried banana and peanut butter before. Is it good? It's okay. So he was also suffering from poor eyesight, not because he was RH negative, <laughs> but he had high blood pressure and an irregular heartbeat, which goes back to the report that it was documented. Yeah. So when during These the are autopsy. These all factors of his obesity that, well, maybe not the eyesight. No. Did he have diabetes? Who, who knows? I don't, I don't that, know. That they're them diabetes. But the interesting piece, though, is they did document that he had a regular heartbeat mm -hmm. leading up to his death. The bigger concern was his constant use of prescribed and illegal drugs, not necessarily the fact that he was eating a bunch of bacon and banana uh, and, and you know, peanut, peanut butter. butter. So Elvis Presley reportedly ignored doctors' warnings that he was close to death from drug abuse. Elvis stated that he had to use drugs to go wild on stage and then to relax afterwards. Oh, see, Kinda so like he, needed, he needed uppers and downers. You already know it, babe. Mm -hmm. Ups and downs. Mm -hmm. So in 1973, he was actually... A lot of performers use uppers mm -hmm. and downers. Yes, I'm hearing about that. Yeah. So after recovering in a hospital bed, he discussed his drug use with his doctor after he was swollen head to foot with colon paralysis colon paralysis mm -hmm. so not constipation beyond that so there's actually another wow. theory that it was not a irregular heartbeat and or heart attack that caused elvis's death because during the autopsy report it stated that he had large intestines yes and his intest his large intestines were twice the diameter Yes. And twice the length yes. of a normal colon. I knew this. Well, you knew that? Yeah. That's a weird fact to just randomly know. I'm surprised you didn't know that. That I was like the biggest thing. It was like Elvis Presley died and there was like eight pounds of poop in his colon or something yeah, like that. Yeah, because he literally died of constipation. Yeah. <laughs> so He died in the bathroom trying to squeeze one out. That's insane. So, the, so you know, so yeah. that was... In the autopsy, it was also documented prior to I that he was having he colon, had colon paralysis. paralysis. I didn't even know that was a thing. Yep. So he was. That's why it caused his whole body to swell up wow. before he died. Yeah. So medically, there's Not a lot of things that are connecting okay. here. I know we're kind of being silly. Not being able to poop is a huge deal. Yeah. It messes you up. Yes. It. Yes. Do you, People get extracted from survivor shows because they can't poop. Was that a survivor show or was it alone? Alone and probably survivor. Yeah, probably. There's a couple of people. Yeah, the, but it's not good when you can't poop and you actually it have stuff in there. Feel sick. It's toxic. You're poisoning it's very your toxic. body. Yes. So Dr. Larry Rubel. Red Bull? Rubel. W-R-U-B-B-L. It's like rubble, but put a W in it. Rebel. So I would still say it, Rebel. Rubble. He was a specialist in internal medicine, and he oversaw and testified of Elvis conditions during multiple hospitalizations between 1973 and 1975. Keep in mind, he died in 1977. Multiple hospitalizations within yep. those two years. Due to drug abuse and 
colon paralysis. How and old was he at this time, too? He died at 42, so this time he must have been he like 30. He was my age. Oh, my God. He's oh, my, my age. gosh. <laughs> yes. You're not 42 yet. No, Give but like during years, but these yeah. hospitalizations. Oh, yeah. Which is five years prior. You better stop all your drug use. <laughs> I need to stop my drug use quick. <laughs> all my uppers and downers for the show. What I do for my audience. No. You're welcome. No drugs. No. We say no to drugs. Both doctors, meaning his private doctor and this doctor, Larry, um, both confirmed that, that they told Elvis that he was taking way too many pills, way too many uppers, downers, and it would kill him. Due to... Presley's death, Dr. George Nicopolis. Nicopolis? Yes. Nic- Nicopolis. Nicopolis. That doctor was Elvis <laughs> Presley's doctor for 11 years. And he was put on trial for 11 felony counts of prescribing addictive drugs to Presley. Yeah. And a few other patients. I think Michael Jackson's doctor's <laughs> on trial or oh, was. He was. I think he was found guilty. This case, he, this doctor, it was like a mistrial and they dropped all they the charges. dropped the charges. Yeah. Because as you'll find out, uh, the doctor was trying to tell him, stop taking. Oh, this is the, this is the same doctor who's mm-hmm. saying, stop it. Yeah. This doctor he's was still saying, prescribing. Well, because there are things that he's prescribing. That are Elvis is good. just taking more uh, than it. And he's probably getting. Additional. From his, you know. He's getting his booga sugar. <laughs> booga sugar from the <sighs> cousin Jeffrey. That. I don't know. <laughs> we don't know how to get drugs. <laughs> We're not cool like that. <laughs> I know a guy. But Dr. Nick. Nicopolis. Uh, Nick. Nicopolis. Uh, <laughs> Nicopolis stated that the doctor was trying to actually advise basically a difficult patient that wouldn't listen to the doctor. Yeah. And right. So that's his really defense. That, yeah. The witness claims that Elvis would fly out of town in the middle of the night to get drugs yeah. or have them smuggled to him yeah. uh, when the doctor refused to prescribe additional drugs. Yeah, I can see that. So additional testimony was that Presley was incoherent and remained in, in his room for weeks at a time after flying to Palm Spring, California to see another physician. And shortly, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I'm like, I feel like I just need to say this. Not that, it, you know, just because you do drugs doesn't mean you're a bad person. That's all. Yeah. No. Yeah. So I'm like, I just, I don't want Great people, point. I don't want people to put a negative light on who he was as a person unless he did other awful things. But no, but I think it, yeah. it goes to the stress of being in being a star Yeah. and the pressure to perform and the routine and his regimen and mm-hmm. everything else associated with it, right? Mm-hmm. After he went to California to see another physician, he had a drug argument between himself and his own doctor. Mm-hmm. And it led to the singer pointing a handgun at him oh, and <laughs> firing it at a TV. And it ricocheted and struck our Dr. Nicol- Nicopolis. Nicopolis struck him in the arm. Was it really a ricochet? I think so. There's a big difference in the kinetic force between a ricochet and I was going to say, because impact. if Elvis shot at him, it mm-hmm. would be attempted manslaughter. If it was a ricochet, it's just reckless endangerment or something like that. Well, it, it shot the TV. So yeah. I, I would say it was probably reckless. Okay. So, But that was interesting. And Elvis was known to have a lot of guns, carry guns all the time, things of that nature, too. Yeah. And so I, I just thought it was odd that he was That's... so big argument, very upset, frustrated. Maybe I should retract my last statement. <laughs> okay, continue. He stated that Elvis's daily routine. So I'm going to go through his daily routine of pills. Gail has her story. This is almost, this is the court story. So all the thing I'm talking about right now is all from witnesses and sworn statements. Okay. Uh, sworn about, statements. About okay. what happened. So this isn't just fan fiction. Fan fiction. Everything. Okay. So the doctor stated that when Elvis woke up, he was given the male hormone testosterone. Okay. And then at 3 p.m., he would be given a voice shot. Ooh. So it's an like inoculation of vitamins and herbs. So good stuff. A voice shot? Mm-hmm. To make sure, yeah. Like, into, his, into his like larynx? Probably a shot. Like oh, a, a shot. Uh, like a I was thinking like shot. needle shot. Ooh, I hope not. But I think, <laughs> ooh, you know what? It didn't clarify. <laughs> I was thinking just like you were a, thinking drinking shot. Yeah, shot, it has shot, vitamins shot, and herbs. Shot, shot, shot. I was thinking and then shot. it coats his throat. coats his larynx. Maybe which, okay, that makes more sense. <laughs> yeah, then the, and then the needle being injected in the throat. Shot be, in the butt cheek. Be bad. I don't know. So at three p.m. He had a voice shot, and then he had medication for dizziness. Mm-hmm. He took a laxative, 
yeah. then he did three appetite suppressants. Mm. And this was considered his, um, or he had, and he had more of his quote unquote uppers. Yeah. An hour before performing, he was given another voice shot, more medicine for vertigo, a decongestant with codeine. What was the decongestant for? Maybe allergies. Oh, yeah. yeah, great point. Um, a dilute, which is a narcotic, which apparently has twice the potency of heroin. <laughs> and so that was an hour before the show. He'll take this. If that wasn't enough, right before he went on stage, he would ingest uh, diluted caffeine and a, oh, okay. Okay. and a dexitrine, which is another upper and more of that dilute, which is the overpowered heroin drug. <laughs> Gosh. After the show, <laughs> he would take a low blood pressure pill, an antihistamine, a tranquilizer, <laughs> a sedative, Gosh. and a diluted Demerol, which is another narcotic. He, that's supposed to make you sleepy, right? Yeah. So now this is his downs. Oh He's my calming down. Gosh. So before the show and everything his else, he poor took. body. So that's just after the show. And then right before he went to bed, we're not done. He has two more steps here. <sighs> Right before he went to bed, he would be given a more sedatives, quaaludes, carbidol, another laxative, more blood pressure pills, three other sedatives. Oh my gosh. But he wasn't done. He also suffered from insomnia. Oh no. So as a six interval, so this is now his sixth set of drugs. He would take more quaaludes and amptol which are both a type of sedative afterwards when he did wake up, his friends would say Elvis looked completely restless. Like he didn't sleep. Like he at didn't all. sleep at all. And then it would start all over again. What a nightmare. That That's a lot. So can you even imagine? I, and just, I'm just thinking of everything, like what it does to your stomach. What is it? You know, you have that combination of drugs. That's pretty hectic. There was a person named Al Strada who used to be the former security guard and then personal aide of Elvis. He testified the lengths that Presley went to, to obtain drugs that went against his doctor. And keep in mind, that's just the prescription drugs. Well, there was a handful of illegal ones in there too, oh, but he would no. get additional ones to supplement or to substitute or to add on oh, to that laundry no. list of things I just said. So here's a quote from the trial after Elvis was going out and seen an unknown physician for drugs. Oh, he was probably using cocaine like tooth whitener. I don't know, but it's fair to guess. I'll just hazard a guess. So here's the quote. This physician decided to put Elvis on a diet consisting of only fruit juices and kept him asleep for three weeks. Alstrada stated that Elvis was very incoherent and he looked like he was going to die out there. Whoa. This is when Sounds Elvis like a went, juice cleanse. Yes. Yeah. So Elvis went to see another doctor because his doctor wasn't providing him drugs pretty much. And so Strata said that Elvis was taking a heavy dose of sleeping pills multiple times a night. And when Elvis refused to take the level of medicine that his doctor prescribed, he stated that he himself took over his friend to ensure that he didn't overdose because, because he was concerned for his life. Yeah. Yeah. And then Elvis would constantly bug him. For more, and eventually, and this is kind of funny, Elvis eventually told him off. What a very old wow. generation term. Yeah. I still use it. Tell you <laughs> off. <laughs> so he told him off with a quote, he was a grown man and could take care of his own medication. Seems very proper. <laughs> How do you think it actually happened? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Beep, 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 beep. Yeah. I don't think it went. <laughs> Mother B. Yeah. Got to be babe. Son of a beep, beep, boop, beep. Get my gun, babe. Have a good day. He was a grown man and could take care of his own medication. Quote. Yeah, I roll. So, <laughs> that was, so that's a little bit of like what's going on behind the scenes in Elvis's life. The months leading up to his death. They eventually got a nurse to administer the medication that lived with Elvis at the Memphis mansion at the Graceland ground. So Strata became concerned when he noticed that the nurse that was kind of hanging out there was slipping Elvis packets of crushed medicine. Mm. 
And so when you, shady. so when you talk to the doctor, the doctor said, Hey, don't worry about it. All those that were slipping are fake drugs. <gasps> placebos? placebos. Yep. Because they're trying to take him off of the, dr the harder drugs. So they're trying to like psycho. They're now they're doing psychological warfare. Yeah. Or Elvis is like, it's not working. I just need to take more, more of the real of ones. Some, oh no! Who knows? It's just it's just all bad. Strada stated that he personally intercepted and destroyed thousands of capsules of drugs that came through the mail and were shipped to the airport. To yeah. Elvis. He personally was seeking this out. He can get them any way he wants. Yeah. Yeah. He's Elvis, baby. He is Elvis. So, so the thought is. If you want to save his life, because this sounds like a person to me who is on death's door. Yeah. Already. On the path to destruction, self-destruction. So I can see that if they wanted to fake his death to save his life and you have these real close friends, I can see that they would try to get him out of the of spotlight. The limelight. Mm -hmm. So this isn't that Elvis faked his own death. This is that his friends and family and loved ones that cared about him killed him off it's not specific it's okay. just saying that he when we say he whether it's he his entourage his this friends his family intervention i was gonna say it. this is like the most messed up intervention ever <laughs> i can see if he did it himself there would be justification to it just with all the drugs and everything yeah if he killed himself if he was going to fake it this would be a reason to fake it I also see based would, off this. Why would that be a reason to fake it? Because you would fake your death so that you can remove yourself from all the uppers and downers. Because if he doesn't have to perform, then he doesn't have to do the ups and downs. He wasn't addicted to them and just keeps feeding his addiction. Did well, he see a I problem with it? Don't know. Okay. But if his main reason why the, he's getting prescribed all this stuff is his ups and downs, then just remove, remove the performance out of it. And yeah, he may still be an addiction, but it'll be easier to... Yeah. Keep him going. I don't know. I just don't see. I Okay, continue. And now, then I'll tell you what I think. Well, ultimately, I think this justifies a lot that Elvis died of constipation. <laughs> I think that's where it's pointing to me. In my yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's one theory. Let's talk about the second theory. The second theory is that he assisted the FBI in testifying uh, against the mob and other organized crimes. So like, um, and then the mob found out about Elvis was helping out the FBI and they were wanted to kill him. Mm -hmm. So how did this even start? Like where was his yeah, involvement if, in If FBI? Elvis was such a heavy drug user, it kind of doesn't really point do, in that you know, direction. Do you know anything about Elvis and like his law enforcement? Um, I know he was in the military. He was in the army. I thought he served a tour, but I could be totally wrong. No, he may have, but he did have a strong fascination and love of law enforcement. And that's well mm -hmm. known. Yeah, that is. So he had multiple honorary police members. I know that of, he performed for the troops a lot. Mm -hmm. Whether he was one of them or not, I don't know. Yeah, no, so that's awesome. But he, he so he, that's where he, like, he saw himself as literally the American hero, right? Good old American boy. So he had multiple honorary police members of this city and honorary deputy of that state. City. Oh, cool. Mo like he had like a handful of Did them. he have keys to the city? I don't know if he had a keys, but he had a lot of different badges. Yeah. He had an interest in getting an official federal badge, not just this honorary stuff. Yeah. He wanted to also specifically combat drugs as the Bureau of Narcotics and Dangerous Drugs badge. And That's he, the badge he wanted? Yep. The BNDD, Bureau of Narcotics and Dangerous Drugs. Was that just like wishful thinking? It was like if you possess the thing that you can never have. Oh. Or I wonder if he thought that he would get more access to the drugs. Oh, God. <laughs> like, it was that. Like, he's doing the long con, right? So, he's he's like, you know what That's I'm going to do? so dark. I'm going to get in all these. <laughs> I'm going to get all these states and honorary you know stuff. What? Would, you know what? I think I would be exceptional at organizing the evidence locker. <laughs> <laughs> I love organizing. Organizing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he really wanted a actual badge and he stated that he wanted to be an agent at large. So not he like a real large. full yeah. large, but like, <laughs> but like an agent, not just an honorary. Mm -hmm. So he got the urge one day to write to president Nixon about mm -hmm. it. And in his private plane, he actually had them go to DC. He got out and he showed up at the white house in person yeah. and hand delivered the, uh, the message to the white house, yeah. December, 1970. 
Yeah, I, there's a picture of that. Uh-huh. Yes, and it's very famous. And it, actually, they made uh, – first of all, I think that's a pretty boss move. Yeah, that is pretty boss. You know what? <laughs> I don't want the person to give me a goddamn badge. I, I'm Elvis. <laughs> and I need a badge right now. Who else can just walk into the White House? <laughs> Tell that president I'm here and he needs to come meet me. <laughs> so Seriously, anybody today? No. I'm like, who could do that today? So – they actually made a big movie about this. I can see Elton John doing it. <laughs> yeah, El- Elton. So if you want to learn more about this whole like interaction, they made a, a big movie about it, and it's called Elvis and Nixon. Mm-hmm. And he even brought a gold-plated World War II Colt forty-five pistol wow. to the White House to present to Nixon <laughs> as a gift, because he thought that would be a good idea. <laughs> I'm going to bring my bandolier. Pistol. My bandolier Gold loaded, plated. yeah. Man, in his letter, he stated that the hippie, the Black Panther, and other organizations didn't see him as the establishment in their eyes. In his eyes, he was America, and he wanted to do good. Okay, he wasn't the establishment, so he could blend in. Oh. Lastly, he stated that I have done. This is in the letter. I have done an in-depth study on drug abuse. (laughs) (laughs) You sure did, boy. In 1973 to 1975, you you did so much studying. (laughs) You put yourself in the hospital five times. Yeah. (laughs) And he said he researched communist brainwashing. LSD is a hell of a drug. (laughs) Oh, man. He is all on it. So I thought that's. That's fascinating. All so right. that was a, a, a an awesome comment, and he wanted a federal badge. And later that year, he received one from the BNDD. Was it made? Of, was it plastic? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's find out. You know, like when you get on your first flight and they give you a pair of wings. <laughs> well, if you don't know the badge, there's a company called Blackington. And it's so out. they also make soccer trophies. No, it's out of Maryland and it creates all the law enforcement badges. Oh, that's cool. For for the federal and other and other law enforcement. Oh, I need to apply today. <laughs> <laughs> so because it was so close, it was in Maryland, that's why they were able to probably do a custom job pretty quickly. Because it wasn't very and far deliver away. it really quickly. It was a turnover in a handful of days. They're like, they Elvis wants it. a badge, and they're like, on it. Done. Yeah. Here you go. And when it was presented a week later, the term that was given was special agent so it wasn't Ooh. attorney it wasn't like federal agent at large <laughs> he didn't have to like take a test pass a polygraph why do you undergo have to go thorough background investigation why do you have drug to, testing <laughs> <laughs> drug testing but why would you have to for a made-up position oh adorable so again the term was oh. special assistant and in the badge, it said, and all duties authorized by the the whatever of this position. And expert comment stated that uh, there is no off authority based off this position because that position doesn't it exist. It's like so it was assistant just a memento. So he's still, he, it's still an honorary. Yeah. <laughs> it means nothing, but yeah. it looked pretty cool. Yeah, that sounds legit. Yeah, so that was kind of funny. Did he tote it around like it was a real deal, though? Probably. I heard yeah. he carried it with him all I was the time. Like, I bet he. I wonder if he knew it wasn't a real. <laughs> he probably didn't care. Yeah, but it, it, ultimately, though, it it means nothing. Yeah. <laughs> that letter where he wrote President uh, on so Nixon. He, he President Nixon on the plane. He wrote multiple pages. This letter was the main writing source. When Gail said she hired a certified document and handwriting expert, a uh, person named Paul West, uh, to review the claim that Presley himself filled out his own death certificate. Hmm. So they had a copy of the death certificate. They had a copy of the letter, letter to, to Nixon. Nixon. And so and the, writing the expert stated and claimed that Presley himself filled out his own death certificate. Mr. West continues to say, I concluded the handwriting was an exact match and it was written by the same person because he used a bunch of different things like the slant of the writing, the spacing between the letter, the words he printed like a lamination and it went over it and, and matched it and said, yep, there you go. 
That's interesting. I'm trying to figure out how to explain that one. Was the death certificate specific in like time, date? Uh, maybe, but I don't think that was brought up as any type of evidence. Because, you know, when someone's saying like, if I were to produce my last will and testament, you know, mm-hmm. someone could be like, oh, after the, her death. Her last will and testament. Well, yeah, because I wrote it before I died. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, like, is this death certificate something that they could have done, that he could have done? No. In prep, in, as, like, it, that, managing his estate preparation work or something like that? It could. Like, his name, his date in, of birth, his, some of his, like, social security or whatever. And talking to the, our expert, uh, that's not normal practice. Okay. So, okay. It, it would not be. All right. We'll talk a little bit more about these experts and what our expert thinks of oh, no. other experts because oh, no. <laughs> our expert loves to give his opinion. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and so we'll talk. Everybody with the sound of my voice. <laughs> you are entitled to my opinion. Yes. Oh, wait. <laughs> are we talking about your dad still? Yes. <laughs> That's our expert. <laughs> he does. He does. Always <laughs> wants to talk about it, but it's Didn't it's we give him a mug that said my opinion matters or something no, like that? No, it said uh, everyone is entitled to my opinion. Yeah, everyone's entitled to my and opinion. That was a perfect a Father's perfect Day gift. or birthday gift. Yeah. That was awesome. So, <laughs> so yeah, we'll talk about what the expert the expert thinks of the other experts. Yeah. So there's also a letter from the Bureau of Alcohol and Tobacco and Firearms or the ATF that gave Elvis a certificate of appreciation in 1976 when the Elvis fan club inquired to the ATF saying, "Hey, what is this letter about? Because it was in his trophy case. Oh, okay. They stated that Elvis actually provided a job cover for one of their agents as a member of Elvis's band. Oh. So it was from 1974 to 1976. Was for two it? years, they oh. did the undercover. So this is actually very legit. Our expert, or my dad, stated that this is actually how the FBI, DEA, ATF would actually use federal agents in situations like this, if Elvis wanted to help, it's not necessarily Elvis is going to be the one undercover kicking in doors. He would have a member of his band posing as, yeah, he would introduce an undercover agent who's trained in all this stuff and introduce him to the drug dealer or introduce him to a crime Lord or some other random thing, right? Or use them as cover so that if they were doing snooping around or if they were yeah hey whatever, you guys met my new entourage my new yeah. right hand man hey, my personal assistant yeah and so that's exactly what they would do is introduce him and do job cover that's what elvis did and so he, again he wasn't fighting but he did do the cover job and that was very legit interesting okay that's yeah, cool. so good job elvis, good job, elvis. So, yeah, that's you, cool you look a little bit better yeah what um what was the outcome of that though in terms of, did he introduce FBI to a drug syndicate or I don't know mafia what the, boss? I don't or know what um, what prosecution things came from. Pedophile ring, you know, like maybe firearms because it's mm-hmm. ATF that was they introduced. Oh, not even drugs. Oh, so alcohol, tobacco, firearms. Oh, mm, I, don't, I have no right. idea. In the FBI files and so on, there was hundreds of reports mentioning Elvis, and. In these FBI files, it wasn't really like Elvis was helping solve crime. It was more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <ha! laughs> yeah, oh, my leg. <laughs> <laughs> but it was more that Elvis was the victim oh. of extortion, harassment, uh, and even death threats. So there was a lot of documents of actual threats towards his life. A lot of celebrities get that, yeah. Yeah. But, and this is where Gail was like, well, why else would they threaten him? Who could threaten all the time? Don't I roll? Yeah, I'm like, just because he's famous, that's why. I mean, just weird things happen to celebrities all the time, and they just can't they can't catch a break. It's like uh, the Hinckley guy who tried to shoot Reagan. Yeah, John Hinckley, right? Some, I think so, in order to uh, woo Jodie Foster, to win her affection. You should never do that for a woman. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. Uh, you want to do something crazy for love? Well, for the present of awesome. That's me, right? I'll do anything for you. <laughs> Yay. Because of all the death threats, Gail said this is why he had to go to witness protection. Oh. Clearly. Our expert, 
being the retired DEA agent, I asked him about what is this witness protection about? Does it apply? And he spilled all the beans. <gasps> all the beans. I want to say everything. Were they garbanzo beans? Pinto sure beans? Black beans? Red beans? Blue Joe for spreading whatever. Coffee beans? I would Jelly say. Jelly beans? Lima beans. <gasps> you went there. <laughs> They're green. Yeah. I like them. <laughs> so our expert, mm -hmm. being the dad, mm -hmm. stated that, first of all, it's only the United States Marshals that deal with witness protection. It's not the FBI. Oh, oh so, I didn't know that. Yep. So if there was an FBI, ATF, or anything I didn't know like what that, the Marshals did. Okay. Mm -hmm. They would actually hand it off to the marshals because the marshals are the ones who that's their focus. That's their area. Mm -hmm. But the key word here is witness in Gail's book. Elvis wasn't a witness to a crime or scheduled to testify in court. My dad stated that it wouldn't even qualify him to be part of the program to be a under the witness protection. Even spoiler alert. Even if he's special. Even if he's a treatment. famous. Well, there's no point in doing special treatment. For someone who's not scheduled to testify. Yeah. He's just under threat, which yeah. is treated differently. Yeah. In addition, because Elvis was one of the most recognizable faces during that time, any type of actual witness protection plan would not even be feasible to attempt. Because the whole point of the witness protection plan is to protect the witness so that they can do the case and then they can disappear, right? Yeah. So what they would be doing is most likely just put them under... 24 7 security surveillance but again that never happened yeah the likelihood that he was taken by the witness protection witness protection, protection. doesn't make sense to him at all yeah okay and they stated well i'm like okay well what if he's was an informant right he's helping out yeah and yeah, he was being like threatened they protect informants don't they well that's let's find out okay he stated that well, they wouldn't necessarily do witness protection for that. They would typically just, because you may have like a low criminal, they normally just give them money and say, you're on your own. Oh. Like, here's some money to escape. And then like they you're leave. on your own. Yeah, but here's a lump sum guy. Or okay. Take a bus okay. or whatever. All right, that makes sense. Yeah, so they potentially may give Elvis a handful of money but and then tell really him, get out it. of here. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't think so. So again, it's one of those, eh, that's... It's not really making sense. Yeah. So second, marshals, if you don't know this, world be aware <laughs> for what I'm about to say. Okay. Marshals do not fake deaths of those going into witness protection. Yeah. <laughs> don't they just change their name? Change their yes. Name? They do they identity. don't kill them. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, if oh. Elvis died. Are you being sarcastic? <laughs> no, I'm not being okay. sarcastic. <laughs> of course they don't kill them. It would them. just be a name change. Hello. Yes. Elvis Aaron, not a Aaron. <laughs> Just yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so if Elvis actually died, or even they changed they his name they... to Elvis Aaron, E R I N. <laughs> <laughs> Elvis with the double L. <laughs> yeah. Hello, <laughs> Elvis. So, but that goes back to he can't fake his death with the witness protection program if that's not the part of their role that's not what they to do. fake deaths in this case. So I thought that was very enlightening. Yeah. And so they do say, though, that that federal agency or the marshals do actually sometimes fake deaths, but it's actually used on undercover agents to remove them from a situation once they got when a certain been compromise or, or once they got enough information. So it doesn't yeah. look suspicious. Yeah. That's that the only sense. time they do it. They don't do it for witness protection. As you said, right, the witness protection piece. How you know someone on witness protection? It's like if uh, our neighbor or someone else, mm -hmm. they would just no longer be there. Yeah. They would just go away and they would have new birth certificates, passports, new IDs. They, new would, have a, cards, they would have new... a job set up for them mm -hmm. and they are expected to actually go to this job. Yeah. It's and a new life. 100% new life. That is what new the witness life, protection is. Mm -hmm. So there's a little behind the scenes okay, of all okay, this stuff. Okay. I asked them, okay, well, let's just say... They did fake a death. Yeah. Whether it's for an agent or for Elvis. What if Elvis paid off the right people? What if he found out? What if they owed him? I don't know. Well, I, I think things were different I in the seventies. I have a third conspiracy that I'll talk about. Okay. But the thing is, though, I asked him. Well, for even for agents, do they fake death certificates? Yeah, that seems plausible. Yeah, I feel like I shouldn't know this information, but 
Yes, they do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, world. <laughs> ah, does, okay. does our expert know that you know that? That you, <laughs> yes, you were going to say that? Okay. I told him I'm recording everything <laughs> and, <he's> and <laughs> you deal with the consequences. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a show to run, and our audiences demand Answers. better investigation. So he stated okay. they do fabricate death certificates. So I'm like, ah, oh, follow up question: Do they uh, fabricate autopsies? Oh. And he said, Yes. No. Oh, <laughs> you can't set it up like that. <laughs> he said, No, of course not. <laughs> That's exactly how he would say it. That's right? exactly how he would say it. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no, they don't do the autopsy because there's no reason to get that elaborate for an agent that you're just trying to remove, Yeah, right? Give the death certificate, move on. Yeah. And then the third question I ask is, okay, so they fake the death. They don't fake the autopsy. What about funds? Do they have access to their own funds? Because Elvis is pretty rich. Yeah. If you were on a witness protection. And the answer? No. Yes. Oh. They have access to their personal funds. While they're on the witness protection program, it's probably weirded routed. I didn't go further detail, but yeah. the hint is that they do have access to their funds. Hmm. Hmm. So you're welcome to learn about all this behind That's the scenes. Bad. Let's talk about what Gail thinks on uh, speak about funds. Like how would Elvis get money? This is what they believe. Yeah. They stated that if he hid, went into his hiding on his own dime, he would need money. So they stated that $3 million were withdrawn three months prior to his death. Hmm. And he cashed out three life insurance policies that uh, equated to about $2 million and had $1 million worth of dollars from a saving count that was removed, never to be seen again, three hmm. months before the death. Now, again, when you think of people like Elvis, I'm just thinking of the millions of dollars that naturally transact. Yeah. And all of his entourage and everyone else. Yes, that's a huge amount of money for even back then. It I don't might know not have been not, for Elvis. Yeah. And it what may his... not be. We don't know what payments he had or anything. Yeah. Um, and even him cashing out, that's unusual, but it's not it's red not flag. It's not unheard of, yeah. And so our expert did not think that this was anything alarming because you get movement like this all the time. You cannot conclude anything based, based off, off of that. That you can theorize that, oh, well, he's using this to, yeah. you know, to run away on his own. But in reality, it doesn't really prove anything. Yeah. It's almost like confirmation bias. If you think that, oh, that's what it is, then that's what you see. Yeah. And lastly, Gail stated there was actually one life insurance policy that was never collected, whether it was due to a clerical error or uh, they're stating that someone doesn't want to collect the life insurance because maybe they don't want to be arrested for insurance fraud. Because they know that Elvis is alive. Hmm. Does that make sense? No. <laughs> I thought, okay, wait, wait. So if you claim a life insurance policy, are you collected on a life insurance policy for someone who's alive? That would be insurance fraud. How can you collect on somebody? That would mean that you took out a life insurance policy on them. Or you were a family member. A beneficiary. Beneficiary, yep. Beneficiaries would naturally get that. Somehow, one of it was never collected. Even if there's no evidence, even if someone goes missing after it's they've like been automatic. missing for two years, it's automatic. That is true. So how would one life and insurance if, policy not get cashed in? I think these are more clerical errors. I think That's it probably what, has so yeah. many that it just. Yeah. I'm like, that seems kind of. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about a couple famous sightings. That yeah, I was going to say, I'm like, so if he's still we haven't alive, even talked about the sightings, if he's right? still alive, where's he been? Yeah. So we're going to go this, through this a, a little fast because I know we're, we're, we're in on our time. But yeah. So the same day he died, a man traveling to Memphis Airport purchased a one-way ticket to Buenos, um, Buenos Aires? Aires, Argentina, and the man reportedly looked quite like him. And he hmm. used the name John Burroughs, which was the alias that Elvis used when booking hotels and traveling. Oh. 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 And there's photos, which I witnessed because I'm an investigator, <laughs> and they were not fully clear, but you can see the man's face. Um, as he saw a camera, he kind of like tried to hide his face. Yeah. And then another one, he had a bunch of rings on his finger while he was hiding his face to show his wealth. Are those photoshopped? I don't or? know. These are 1970s. It, okay. it looked legit. And then he's in the market and he had a shirt open, very Presley style. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the you don't think that if you were trying to be on the lamb that you would look a little bit less like your 
your movie star They're self. looking exactly for the Elvis. Yeah. And then one of the ladies in the picture. So it was probably just some gigolo. Probably. Yeah. But one of the ladies had like both of her, uh, her hands on her head and they were like. <gasps> <laughs> and so who knows? She was excited. And so there's that picture. Then the investigator on Gail's side stated that after hours after Elvis died, he said he saw a photograph of Elvis being surrounded by federal agents getting onto a plane or oh. a helicopter. And later on, he didn't think much of it because mm-hmm. he went and wrote his own story. But later on, he's like, oh, that would have showed that he was alive after, after the death. That. And so when he tried to connect back with that agent, the agent acted like he didn't know what he was talking about. Oh. And in fact, he blew him off and denied that that picture even ever existed. <gasps> but he had the picture. Or did he? He stated that he never showed that person the picture. So the agent was just denying, denying, denying. Living in denialism. That proves nothing. Mm -hmm. No. Except uh, that's just an (laughs) Except that he was talking to the wrong agent. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Probably. So that's another Gale investigation. December 31, 1977, about four months after his death, Elvis Mm -hmm. was spotted and photographed by Mike Joseph at Graceland in the pool house door that showed Elvis looking out at his fans past his grave. Oh, so he was like in the background? Yeah. Like through the door, you can see a picture of a man sitting and it looks like Elvis. And so Gail says it was Elvis. They got it certified and there was Kodak determined that there was nothing tampered. And there's a lot of conflict between, uh, there's a couple of people who knew Elvis really well. And one was like, hey, it's his cousin, Jimmy. And another person was like, no, it's actually, um, Strata, Al Strata oh. was in the picture. Mm-hmm. And Al Strata actually does look like the person in the picture, too. Oh, so, so like, yeah. But again, people are saying that this is it. They're trying to make connections. The other piece is when Muhammad Ali was in the hospital, it was reported that Elvis went to visit, visit him, him because they're good friends. And so as they're leaving the hospital, it was Ali, Jesse Jackson, an unknown man, and a man that looked like Elvis. Yeah, I heard so, that one. <laughs> yep, so it was like, it's a match. Mm-hmm. They actually sent it to another expert who did facial analysis mm. and concluded that it's a match. Oh. It's Elvis. Pure up. Mm-hmm. We'll talk about these experts yeah. at the end. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> then they did another voice authenticator expert, another expert, oh. listen to a conversation that was apparently by Elvis and his time hiding in Germany. And he was mm-hmm. talking that, um, you know, weakness, uh, waitress recognized him and he thought that hey he had it all pretty covered and yeah. and she's like i'd never forget a face because he was actually stationed in germany in 1958 yeah so oh. or he was enlisted in the army in 1958 but there was that piece yeah and then last there was a general there's all those general sightings like i saw elvis at the burger king yeah. because that's his favorite place <laughs> um or his birthday people took a picture of an old man at the Graceland, and they're like, old man, it's him. Ugh. Things like that happen all, all the, the time. time. Even to the point that if you look at Home Alone, one of the background <laughs> persons looked like Elvis, and they're like, that's Elvis. That's Elvis. Oh, gosh. <sighs> he's not doing a very good job being dead if he's <laughs> if he's being cited so much. Yeah. So what does our experts say about these other experts that examine yeah. handwriting, voice analysis, oh, face I analysis? I to get this opinion. <laughs> well, his, his expert opinion. His, his blood opinion is all bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> quote. <laughs> quote. quote. <laughs> that, 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 and that's how that's That's how exactly it, it. Yeah. So I'm going to word it and say, they can't be trusted. <laughs> <laughs> it's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. <laughs> they're either lying or they don't know what the hell they're talking they about. They don't know what the hell they're talking about. Yeah. Also <laughs> quote. <laughs> uh, we've been around it for a while. Yeah. So he said that they can't be trusted unless they're able to be vetted through cross-examination. Yeah. So our expert is an actual expert witness in court where any time before you can be considered an expert, they have to cross-examine by attorneys to figure out what the expert's education is, ex- experience. They would challenge if uh, they're competent. And then the judge, after listening to both, would deem if that person would be considered an expert witness. And if the judge says, yep, you are good, then you would be the only person who's able to render an opinion in the court case. Oh, 
because oh. you are an expert. Or an expert witness. That's so right. Your so that's why you can't just call anybody to the stand. Yeah. And so all these voice hand, you have to be trained by the government and forensics. Mm -hmm. They specialize in it and they go. So without knowing these, and I tried to research these individuals that you weren't really overly famous. Or right, whichever, right, right. But unless they really vetted and showed what their credentials were. Mm -hmm. Or if they were be able to get cross-examined, or if they were to able to like analyze multiple different papers and so on, you can't conclude what they actually know, right? Because it's it's all hearsay or so wherever it's, they yeah, want. It's all hearsay. You can. It's all conjecture. Yeah. Yeah, and there are some private sectors that do like the equivalent training or like academia, and he's like, it's all it's there, but it's all. Not, it's, it's, all like, it's, it's like it's like pseudo science. Pseudo. <laughs> it, it, it's super. It, it's just not as accurate, and yeah. it's not. It's needed like, for what it's the, open to purpose. interpretation yeah. exactly all right so let's do a quick fun fact of the episode <laughs> yeah so due to gail's publishing of the story yeah it did have an unintended consequence that upset elvis fans Ooh. so what did she leak or what did she say fans of elvis have been calling for a postage stamp bearing his image for a while and if you are curious, well, why didn't they have a postal stamp of him when he was alive? Well, fear not, baby birds. Yeah. I'll feed you. Yeah, feed me. To quote, that no portrait or likeness of any living person hereafter engraved shall be placed upon any of the bond security notes, uh, fractionals, or postal currency of the United States. Yeah. So basically, uh, you can't have someone who's alive. Exactly, yeah. You can have background people and such like that. And that's why Elvis was never... Famous, on postage. On post it before while he's alive. Yeah. So there's a thing there where you have to wait for a person to be dead for 10 years before, before they can be memorialized. Can be memorialized. So that would be 1988 because he died in 78. However, because of the book that Gail published, oh, it caused such so, an uproar. Oh, no. Oh, no. If he's not dead, he can't be on he the can't stamp. Be on the stamp. <laughs> And so his death was in doubt. Fuck you, Gail! <laughs> the goddamn girl! <laughs> it delayed the publication of Elvis Stamp by I'll five years. I'll see you in hell, Gail! <laughs> yeah, it delayed it by five years. So I just thought that was funny. Dang it, too, Gail. Too <laughs> yeah, unintentional consequences. <laughs> and lastly, um, creepy fact of the episode. Oh. Give me creepy. I like Elvis creepy. Presley. Now, again, it's hard, it's bad to judge time back in the day, right? right? But Elvis Presley started dating his future wife when he was 24, and she was... Uh, I'm going to say 14. 14, exactly. Priscilla Buelio. Buelio. So, Ten yeah, year it's one of those, but I think that's, that was kind of more common than I expected. It was expect. more common back in the day, but still, but still that uh, is, uh, marriage was 16, but that doesn't mean you can't date but them. You know what though? They stayed together though, didn't they? I guess. Yeah. They, I mean, yeah, they married for they X amount of time. He, he married her and you know, okay. Okay. So that is still pretty icky though. So that's really it. I have one last because the expert has one last final oh. um, comment, final thoughts. What are your final thoughts? My final thoughts are. What do you think happened? <sighs> okay. With all that evidence. I don't think that there is anything substantial enough to make him want to fake his death. If he was under like financial duress or uh, relationship problems or trying to escape just the starlight in general, mm -hmm. I can see faking a death. But it didn't seem like he was. It's. I think the what I concluded is that it's very hard to fake your death. Yes, it should be. Yes. And and well. So if if he was still alive, it would slip. A friend or family member, it would slip. Yeah, forty five years later, which is it, it is would about come now. out. Mm -hmm. Someone. Well, would. he would probably really be dead now. Maybe he'll He'd be, be eighty five. Or yeah. So what I take from it so, is. So I mean, I don't, okay, sorry. Well, well, with the medical stuff that I had to research during that trial, that was pretty telling. Yeah. I am thinking this guy. This you're seeing the writing on the wall. He was heading towards. He was that. the king of rock and roll, and he was really not, rocked. Um, insert pooping pun. Because oh. <laughs> the constant. He was the shit, or not? <laughs> or not. So, our experts 
um, who literally wrote the book on conspiracy investigation again, wanted to leave us with this one final note on the situation. I can't wait to hear his No, closing. it wasn't all blunt. I filtered it out. Okay. You black marketed all the... <laughs> is it just I a page of paper it. with three words on it now? Bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, so he said, hey, everyone needs to think in perspective here, right? There, if, if he was going to fake his death, there are so many people who would have to cover that up. Yeah. Crime scene investigators... Uh, who were on the initial body scene where those located. Yeah, right. That's at least a hundred people, the fake autopsy and all the civilian doctors and nurses and uh, admin who would be normally involved in processing paperwork and et cetera. All of them would also have to be lying about this. And out of 40 years plus, no someone one came out. It's going to, someone would have come or, out or during the fact, no one had integrity to say, this is wrong this is, and, exactly. came and, and whistleblown it. He's like, you don't understand when, how, elaborate conspiracies actually are he might he investigates this right you yeah. can't that many people probability someone would have it would have something. been leaked by now yeah and so um and the other thing is people make mistakes during cover-ups yeah and so you have to think of all these people and no one made a mistake and I, I know everyone assumes that everyone is proficient at their job and, you know, everyone's Jason Bourne, right, mm -hmm. uh, in the government. But in reality, the, the Even the mail biggest, clerk. Uh-huh. Yeah, but think this. Who's your average person that you meet uh, from a government agency? DMV? Mail oh. clerk? How many negative experiences did you maybe – due to inefficiencies, competencies, yeah. whatever did you witness in those areas? Yeah. That is your average employee, yeah. not Jason Bourne. One of them's – going to make a mistake. So you said there's just a bunch of simpletons out there. Potential. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say simpletons because if you work for the DMV, hey, good on you. But the there, big thing just, is, it's, it's just a very structured process and it's easy to miss steps. They're not Jason Bourne. Someone they're would not. make a mistake with this number of people. So that's People it. make mistakes. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I, he died on the pooper, pooping, or yeah. attempting to poop. <gasps> We'll never know. Oh, did you ever get it out? <laughs> <laughs> That's the real question. Isn't that the reason? Well, I don't want to say that. <laughs> I was like, don't like a majority of people die on the pooper. <laughs> I'm sure it happens more often than you think. I thought that it was, I thought our expert witness said that a lot of people die in the bathroom. Oh, there are. I don't know if it's constipation or. And it might not necessarily be constipation. It might just be like, I'm not feeling well. And they go in there. And they go to the bathroom and then they end up dying. That's why. He wants a phone installed in his bathroom, I or he does have it. He does have. He does I wasn't. Have, I didn't wasn't. want to say. No, he's. But I'm like self experience. When we were going on in. a home tour, he had a, a phone by the toilet, and I was like, "That's an interesting choice." And he's like, "A lot of people die in the bathroom." He and I'm has like, I appreciate seen that. that in his line of work. He's seen it enough. So. No. Thank you, expert witness, for joining Thank us today. Thank you, expert witness. <laughs> we'll see you in a few days when you come visit yeah, us. <laughs> we can't wait to see you guys. <laughs> so that's my Elvis story, and thank you for your time. And Yeah, great story, babe. Yeah, keep staying curious. Yeah, and stop Ooh, thinking with your clogged butt. <laughs> I was saying, stop thinking with your gut. <laughs> no. Mm, <laughs> stop putting drugs in you. <laughs> Ow! Ow! <laughs>